All right. I'm going to spend a little time up here talking about salt stack. Now, <clears throat> salt stack is a really exciting component and project and a company that we've been working on for a while now. So I first started writing the original software for SaltStack back in 2011. The main idea behind SaltStack and the reason why I started writing it was because I wanted a way to be able to get real-time information about an infrastructure. I wanted a way to be able to command change in an infrastructure extremely quickly. And none of the tools that were out there were anywhere near fast enough or performant enough. So I started developing this software after many attempts to create a communication system that would meet, the, meet these needs. In, uh, in March of 2011, the first release of SALT came out. And we started to get a following. We started to see people using SALT. We started to see people get excited about SALT. And the open source community slowly began to grow. Now, in the beginning of 2012, it got to the point where we had maybe 20 or so people had written code for SALT. But through 2012, we saw an explosion in the SALT community. There was a lot of interest in a remote execution system and a configuration management system being brought together and being built so that they operate high speed and so that they were extremely easy to use and able to function in large environments. And so in August of 2012, I got the SaltStack company off the ground and our community has, has continued to grow and our user base has continued to grow as, we're gonna, as I'm gonna talk about here. Now, what SaltStack does and why SaltStack is advantageous is because it's built for modern infrastructure needs. One of the big problems we run into a, at a lot of infrastructures and a lot of cloud deployments is that everybody's needs are different. I've never run into two data centers that have the same requirements. And so SALT has been built to be extremely flexible. It's able to hook into a lot of different components out there. It's able to hook into a lot of different databases. It's able to gather information from databases and store information there. It's able to function in environments that are in public clouds as well as private clouds or multi-clouds. So it's very flexible. One of the other core components of SALT is its speed. It's been made to be ridiculously fast. One of, one of my favorite quotes comes from a supercomputing administrator who is running commands across about 2,000 servers and saying it took him about 15 to 20 minutes to run a command using the existing tools. And then now with SALT, it takes five seconds. Okay. In 2012, at the end of the year, GitHub published a blog post called The Octoverse. Now, SaltStack and Salt was named the eighth largest developer community on all of GitHub for that year. OpenStack Nova was number seven. So Salt has gained a huge amount of community traction and community interest and community code something that we're very grateful for. But it also drives hard the fact that a project that was started in a basement was able to generate so much community traction over the course of just a year and a half. And the majority of this community was grown during the year of 2012. Now we're at OpenStack Summit, I gotta talk about how SALT works with OpenStack. Now, SALT isn't a system that runs on top of OpenStack. It's a system which is a fantastic complement to an, to an existing OpenStack deployment, or it can be used to automate the deployment of OpenStack. Since SALT is a configuration management system, it can be used to easily 
deploy all of the components of OpenStack that run on top of your server hardware. So right now up on uh, GitHub, we do have salt formulas for the configuration and management of Nova, Glance, and Keystone, and we're working on expanding that. We also have quite a few users out there who are heavily involved in SALT. We've got some deeper integrations now with HP Cloud Services and PayPal. And I want to talk to a few of the other companies out there that are using SALT. Now, this is a small sampling of the guys that are out there. There are some very large companies that are using SALT. There are a lot of small companies that are using SALT. And they're using it across many, many, many different venues and applications. So for instance, we can look at a LinkedIn who's using SALT to manage their bare metal hardware. So outside of a cloud environment, we can look at uh, places like Harvard where they've used SALT in supercomputers. And we can look at places like, <clears throat> like cars.com that uses SALT to manage all of their, their web tier. Or we can look at places like Wikimedia, who's involved in SALT for automating code deployments. Now, I've talked a little quickly, so I'm going to give an overview again of what SALT does and how it works. Now, as I've mentioned, the core function of SALT is a remote execution system. It is a communication layer for the infrastructure. What this buys you is the ability to send information across multiple systems about the system. It takes auto discovery to a whole new level. It takes monitoring to a new level and it takes setup to a new level. Because what you can do with SALT is you can say, I want to gather information from everybody in the infrastructure and get that information back instantly. Also, you can go with SALT and you can say, I want to deploy certain pieces of software on highly targeted pieces of my infrastructure. And it's going to go out and, again, instantly deploy that software. Now, we take it up a level because I've talked about the fact that SALT is more than a remote execution system. We can take it up to the fact that SALT is a powerful configuration management platform. Now, how the configuration management in SALT is built is that you don't need to learn a DSL to use it. In fact, you don't even need to know how to program to use SALT's configuration management. Everything that, you're, that is done in SALT is done with very simple data modeling, which means that the expression of what your system needs to be can be done, again, simply and quickly. Options are, though, available that if you want to program your infrastructure, you can do it inside of SALT. You can program your infrastructure using pure Python or by using our specific DSL. Now, this configuration management allows, because it's all based on data modeling, allows you to look at your system from a more data-centric perspective. So, for instance, in setting up uh, an OpenStack deployment using SALT, the main benefits that we run into are that instead of going through and creating variables that need to be passed through, your top-level functions and your top-level setup is very clean. If we were to go and look at the deployment of OpenStack formulae on GitHub right now, everything is abstracted in a data model. So any configuration that you want to apply can be applied in a central location, and then it gets parsed down into all of your config files for you. All right. Does anybody have any questions about what SALT is or what SALT does? Yes. So the question is, is SALT specific to OpenStack, or is it um, a generic component? OK. SALT is a generic component. 
it does not have any requirements on OpenStack. So it can operate in an OpenStack environment or in a generic, uh, well, bare metal or any sort of virtual, virtualized environment. Now let me talk a little bit more to this. Some of the main benefits of SALT and some of the main, the core ideas around it were focused around the idea of making it extremely easy to use and deploy. And so what this means is that SALT has no middleware. SALT doesn't require any broker software or any databases. All of the functionality in SALT is self-contained. Now with that said, SALT does integrate with external components if you want it to. So if you want all of the information about what SALT is doing to be stored in an arbitrary database, it can do that. Does that answer your question? Sorry? Yes, SALT can actually be used to upgrade itself. Yes, so the question, sorry, I should have repeated the question. The question was, can SALT be used to upgrade existing software? And yes, SALT can be used to push out package upgrades. It can be used to push out file patches. It can be used to upgrade software on multiple platforms. So we support software management on all of the major Linux platforms and some of the less than major Linux platforms. Um, the BSD tier of systems, as well as Windows and Mac OS. So the question is, uh, is SALT similar to Bosch? Um, I'm not as familiar with Bosch. It does share a, a couple of concepts, yes. Um, in that, uh, yeah, and that it covers a similar space with respect to configuration management. But as far as architecture goes, it handles things very differently than Bosch does. The question is, does SALT support Windows? Uh, SALT does support Windows. So not only does it support Windows in running commands, it, but it can be used to configure the registry in Windows. It can also be used to deploy and install software on Windows. It can also be used for patch management and updates. So it employs a fairly wide spectrum of capabilities on Windows platforms. All right, does anyone have any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.